Hey guys, I'm back with another Steam Monsters video. And as promised in the five ways to earn crypto with Steam Monsters, I'm gonna go deep into the Steam Monsters trading pit and show you how to make even more money. So let's get started. So you probably already know by now that in your Steam Monsters account, there's a market tab. And this is an easy way for you to buy and sell a single card. Let's just say we click on one of the cards here. We can see that these are the cards that are available for purchase. Now, if we wanted to buy one of these, well, we just simply click on the card and decide whether we'll pay in Steam or SPD and then hit buy. Conversely, if you wanted to sell a card, you would go into your collection tab, then just click on the card and hit sell. Then you have to go and enter a price that you want to sell this card for. But there is an easier way, and it's called peakmonsters.com. And this is where all the serious Steam Monster traders go to buy and sell cards. So let's just go over to Go To Market. So here we'll see all the cards listed on Steam Monsters. And we can actually see the card low price, and sometimes we find when they level up their cards, they'll sell cards even cheaper. But a single card is really the base price that we're looking at today. Now, as you'll see here, some of these cards have a little clock next to them, which means that these cards can't be played in a season battle until the time has expired. In this case, it's just four days after purchase. So you want to keep that in mind if you're buying cards to actually play with. But we're looking at making a profit here, so we're going to buy and sell cards. Now, down the right-hand side, there's a series of filters. So we can actually filter on the different types of cards that are available on Steam Monsters. So in this case, we're looking at both Alpha and Beta cards. And if we scroll down, we'll start to see that some of the cards are different. And these are the Alpha cards. So go ahead and add a card to your cart, and then you can check out. But the power of Pig Monsters increases when you log in, because you can use features like the bid market and the bulk purchase. So let's log in and see what all this means. Now, if you have a Steam account, this should work on Pig Monsters, so there's no problems there. But I suggest getting a Steam Monster starter deck, so you can have a little bit of a play of the game as well, for a little cost. I'll put a link down below to get you started. It's only $10 and you get about $5 worth of cards in that. So that's not too bad. And also as a trader, you really need to understand the metagame if you're going to trade cards and make profit. So playing the game and understanding how people play and what cards are better than others is really important. All right, so we've logged in now. Now we have a few more features available to us. So if we go back to this one card here, instead of actually just buying at the market rate, we can actually put in a bid price. And that bid price means that we can buy cards even when we're asleep. You just go ahead and set your price. And if you don't have enough Steam in the Peak Monsters account, it'll tell you. So let's go and add some crypto in the Peak Monsters marketplace. We just go up to our profile. And here we can see how much balance we have on Peak Monsters. Now I'm running a little bit low on Steam, so I'm gonna go ahead and add in a few Steam. I'll just add 10 for now. So I'll just click on Steam and then hit deposit. Now this just means that your Steam will go to Pig Monsters so they can do the trades on your behalf. Of course all the cards get sent to your account when the trade has been made. So that should be fine. I'm going to go ahead and uh, just come out and refresh that. Okay, so now we see in our credit balance we have 10.002 Steam available to us. So let's go back to the marketplace and have another look at this bid function. So now if we click on bid and we put in a price, let's say it was going to be 0 0.029, so 2.9 cents, and we wanted to get five of those. We hit confirm and then close. Now our bid will be registered as soon as the transaction has been confirmed, which is only a few seconds on the Steam blockchain. So now we're in the bidding marketplace. If we actually hide these cards, we can see that there's also another bid at this price. And they're currently looking for another 29 cards. So once their bid has been completed, ours should go to the front of the queue. So that's one way to buy cards. Now the thing with Steam Monsters is the market cap has been growing quite steadily since automatic tournaments have been released. 
So this is a great time to buy and sell on the marketplace. First of all, you want to find a card that people are buying. Now it might be this goblin sorcerer here. See how the lowest price is listed for four cents and the highest bid is just under three cents? Well, if you actually set your bid a little bit higher, you would get all the cards that were being sold for less than four cents. And then you go ahead and relist them for four cents which essentially would mean you'd buy cards for three cents and you'd sell them for four. Seems like a pretty good deal, doesn't it? So let's go ahead and put in a bid here. So we wanna just add this up to 3.9. And the reason why we put the nine at the end, because it means everything lower than that number, your bid will be fulfilled. And let's just say we put in a bid for 10 and confirm and close. And if we just refresh the marketplace, we can now see that the lowest bid is our bid. So we'll start buying cards at three cents. Then when we've actually purchased the cards, we can go ahead and sell them for four cents. That is a 25% markup. But keep in mind when you sell Steam Monster cards, uh, there's a 5% fee, but that's okay. You're gonna be earning 25% anyway. So that's one way to make money with Steam Monsters and just simply buying low and selling high. Now there is another way to make money on peak monsters and that's the arbitrage between alpha and beta cards. Now new people to the game don't realize that before beta cards we had alpha cards and although the beta cards are the same as alpha it takes a lot less alpha cards to level up your steam monsters. So there's going to be an arbitrage there if the prices are very similar. If you wanted to make a level four rare card in alpha, you'd need eight cards. But if you went over to beta, you'd find for the same level, you'd actually need 11 cards. So let's go and see if we can find some alpha cards that are about the same price as beta and make money on the arbitrage. Okay, so here's a great example. We can see that for an alpha Defender of Truth, the lowest price is 51 cents. And if we go over here to the beta edition, it's actually 56 cents. So let's go ahead and buy one of these cards and I'll show you what you do. You just simply go ahead and click on and add to cart. Then we pay it out. And this will ask you, do you wanna purchase from your normal Steam account or do you wanna use it from the credits that you've added to Pig Monsters? So we're going to go ahead and just use it from one of our credits. And we'll just wait for the transaction to be completed. Then if we just go across to our Steam Monsters collection, filter on the splinter, and we can see that we have now one Defender of Truth card. And it's set to Alpha. We don't have any Beta. So what we can do is just check the box and then hit Convert to Beta. Now what this does, it just changes the card from Alpha to Beta. So we'll just click OK. And now instead of having one alpha card, we have one beta card. So now we'll go back to our marketplace. Then we'll just click my collection. So we can see our collection on the Peak Monsters website. And again, we can use these filter tabs to quickly find our card. Now, if we scroll down, we can see that we have one Defender of the Truth. And if we view the card, It'll give us all the details about this particular card. And the thing we wanna know now is that we paid 51 cents to buy this card and the lowest listing is actually 56 cents. So we can go ahead and add 56 cents to our listing price, or if we prefer to sell the card quicker, we can just make that 55 cents. Then we just go ahead and hit the sell button. And then we just need to confirm our card listing to make sure we haven't made any mistakes. Hit confirm and then close. Okay, so that's a simple one card trade, but there is more value in the arbitrage of alpha and beta cards. So let's take a look at this dark enchantress. Uh, the alpha card is currently sitting at 33 cents while the beta card is at 35 cents. And we know from our chart that we need eight cards to make a level four alpha card. Whereas we need 11 cards to make a level four beta card. So let's go ahead and see what that looks like. Now I've gone ahead and purchased some of these ahead of time. And now we need to click on eight of these cards. And then we can just hit combine. 
and it just tells us that uh, one card will be level four and zero cards towards the next level. And so now we can see that we have a level four Dark Enchantress in Alpha. Now what we can do is click on that and hit Convert to Beta. Now we can see we have a level four a Beta card. So let's go over to the Marketplace again and scroll down our collection. We'll go to the Beta cards that are available. Now we can see we've got one level four listed already. And now we have another level four card. And its base card XP is now 11. So it's letting us know that this one card is now worth 11 single cards. So when we're doing a multiplier on the listing price, and we can see that the lowest listing price is 35 cents, we just times that by 11, which gives us $3.90. And that could be our sell price. But sometimes I like to go a little bit lower. So I might sell this at $3.50, but effectively only paid 33 cents per card. So if you times that by eight, you get $2.64. So for that transaction, I could make upwards of 30%. And so we'll just let that sit in the market until it sells. So the alpha and beta arbitrage is definitely worth taking advantage of. You can buy less cards in alpha, upgrade them to beta, and then sell them at a higher price. So there's a couple of other things you can do in the Pink Monsters Marketplace. One is the rarity bid. Now you need to make sure that you've actually made some purchases first before this is activated, but it allows you to buy cards based on their rarity and their addition, and whether they're regular or gold cards, and you can just buy them in bulk, knowing that that should be the lowest price for a rare card or an epic card or even a legendary card. And Peak Monsters also has a profit share too. So if you go to your account and have a look at which tier you are, depending on how much money you've spent purchasing cards on Peak Monsters, determines the tier that you have. So right now I'm tier two. So basically when I make a purchase, I'm getting an 8% profit share, which is kind of nice. And it's a little bit of extra steam as well. So that's the marketplace. And we've covered three ways to enhance your trading experience. One is just to simply buy and sell on the marketplace. And the second is to bid on cards and sell slightly higher. And the third is the alpha beta arbitrage. So go ahead and start trading Steam Monster cards for profit. Now, the other thing you wanna do is just keep an eye on the Steam Monsters account because they'll let you know when there's any new changes to Steam Monsters. And right now they've just announced card delegations which means that you can potentially lease out those cards you've purchased and get a return on investment over a period of time. Plus you'll still own the cards. Now you also wanna check out the Steam Monsters Discord because there's lots of important information here too. For instance, the official updates are always listed here, but as a trader, you could go to the Mount Mox Monsters Market and go into the trader chat and do and buy and sell which cuts out the middleman and means you don't have a 5% fee when selling cards. So that's a little bit more about Steam Monsters trading in depth. Hopefully you've enjoyed those quick tips and tricks. And if you have, don't forget to check out the other videos in this series. And of course, if you like the channel, please subscribe and like the videos because that really helps me to grow. So until next time, it's bye for now.